Hello guys, good day now. For today's video lecture, I'll be discussing on how to tabulate and organize your data in Microsoft Excel. So in our previous discussion, I have discussed on how to treat your data. No? So we have the data already and we will be treating it according to the appropriate statistical treatments. So I have introduced yung descriptive statistics on how to look for the mean, median, mode. Tapos yung variances na din, yung variance and your standard deviation or simply your measures of variance. Then, how to use correlation in your Excel, tapos yung t-test, tapos yung ANOVA. Now, in this case, uh, tapos na kayong mag-gather ng data. So, you use your questionnaire as your measuring tool. You go to the field, then extracted data from your respondents or from your key uh, uh, informants. No? Then, afterwards, paano nyo siya translate dito sa Microsoft Excel? Now, some of you already have an idea. Yes, madali lang naman mag-tabulate. But majority are still di pa nila alam. No? So this video lecture, one of its objective is paano nga ba natin i-organize at i-input yung data sa ating Microsoft Excel. Then some tips na din. No? Then a little bit of refresher course uh, on, the, on how we will be using or how we will be tweeting yung data dito sa Microsoft Excel. Okay. So mamaya na to. Uh, may I provide yung ginawa kong sample SOP. Okay. So, we will be looking into the objective of this research. Kunyari, no? So, the research objectives could be reflected on your statement of the problem. Uh, actually, madami to pero ginawa ko lang tatlo kasi ano lang, para mamagets natin yung pag-organize ng data. So, there are three statement of the problems. So, first, we wanted to know the perceived level of importance of local government officials on evidence, excuse me, on evidence based policies. So, ano, uh, sino yung mga respondents natin? Local government officials. So, local government officials would now include uh, heads, department heads, yung mga supervi nasa supervisor or managerial levels no, ng ating. LGUs. Now, LGUs would include your city, municipality, and provinces. And as well, barangays. However, hindi ko na in-include yung barangay dito. No? So, tatlong entities lang ang titignan natin. City, municipality, then uh, province. No? On evidence-based policy, I have discussed this already. So, just a refresher. Kung evidence-based policies, policies should be based on researches. Yan. And yan yung common trend. Quote and quote, common trend na may question mark dito sa ating uh, when we talk about policy making process. Okay. So, gaano nga ba ka-importante on the perception of your local government officials in uh, sa evidence-based policies? Ang basis ko dito later sa questionnaire papakita natin would now be yung kay uh, sa European Commission. No? Number two, what is the level of agreement of local government officials on the underutilization of research in the policy process? Uh, medyo nahihirapan pa kayo i-conceptualize yung SOP natin pero ipapakita ko siya sa questionnaire. No? And I will be introducing this and the questionnaire pa mag-gets nyo kung saan natin napulot yung mga ito. Yan. So, kailangan ko din bagalan. No? So, level of agreement. Bakit ang research hindi madalas ginagamit or ini-ignore sa policy process? Then, this two, by the way, is descriptive. So, please take note that Nate Take note of the term level, no? So level is basically, uh, it presents a level uh, measurement already, no? Yan. Yung level, it could be reflected as interval, ratio, or even ordinal. Yan. But commonly, when you already check this one, pagdating sa mga thesis or dissertation, level would now assumingly uh, present weighted mean yung ginamit na measurement. Then for the third SOP, ginamita na natin siya ng inferential. No? So 1 and 2, descriptive siya. Then the third one is inferential. Paano natin madidistinguish kung inferential yung ginamit or nag hypothesis testing na tayo if there's a term significant difference? Yan. So uh, ito lang muna yung inferential natin no? coming from the findings dito sa number 1. No? So number 2, hindi na sigo, but we could play with the data later. So number three dictates that is there or question is there a significant difference on the perceived level of importance of local government officials on evidence-based policies? I forgot to include dash sign between elective and appointed government positions. Now this will be reflected later dun sa ating questionnaire, no? So dito gusto lang natin makita overall kung ano yung level of importance ng mga government officials 
Ngayon dito, nagko-compare na din tayo. Sino i-compare natin? Elective and appointed government officials. So from your SOP number 3 alone, pinapakita niya na natites, the possibly tites ang pwede natin gagamitin. So from your SOP, may na-construct na tayong questionnaire. So tatlong SOP natin, ha? level of importance, level of agreement, then uh, significant difference. However, pwede mag din tong SOP natin kasi may data lang yan. Now, dito sa questionnaire, this is just a made-up questionnaire, no? So, basic principles in making your data gathering instrument or questionnaire, no? Or tool, di ba? Is, you have to include the personal profile. Now, in your SOP, pwede din mag-reflect doon kung gusto mong hanapin yung demogra demographic profile, no? So, you could include it or you could now include it in your chapter 2. Now, this is the sample questionnaire, no? So, respondents natin, sino? Sino? Local government officials. So, include the name, optional. Although, kung, kung gagawa ka naman ng letter, you have to address it to the official mismo, no? So, just let, write the name. Kung yabi, nahiwalay yung letter at yung questionnaire, no? City address, home address, um, depende sa research nyo kung relevant yan. The age, gender, yan. So, you could also include it in your SOP if you want to know if there's a significant difference of their, of their level of perception or level of importance when moderated according to gender, yan. Highest educational attainment, yan. Hindi na-reflect sa SOP natin, but you could include this one. Kasi you think that kung mas edukado yung ating uh, mga officials, if they have attained a higher degree, mas mataas yung perception nila uh, when it comes to importance of research in, in making policies. Accumulated years in public service, you could include that in your SOP, local government unit assigned, yan. Although hindi naka-indicate sa ating SOP, Kung gusto nyong paglaruan yung data and later include it in your research, pwede din yan. Now, SOP number, let us go back dito. Yan, di ba? Nakalagay dito is sa number 3, elected and appointed. Yan. So, position is elected, then appointed, then under elected. Kung governor siya, vice, then appointed. Yan. If you remember yung siningit kong explanation, di ba? Yung sa bureaucracy, di ba? There's a difference between the political organ of the government and the administrative organ of the government. So, appointed dito, no? Tapos naka-indicate dito. So, this is indicated, lalo na to, this is indicated at your RA7160, yung local government code natin. So, there are certain positions that would now... Uh, provide or offer no, by the city government. Uh, yun, no? So, similar siya sa ating kabinete. No? Kung may DPWH, may city engineering. Kung may DOH, may health officer. Kung may DOJ, may legal officer. No? Yan. Tapos, stringent dito. Kasi dito sa appointed, uh, when the local government official, executive, sorry, special kunyari kung municipal government, yung mayor should when he is selecting yung heads ng offices na to, dapat may corresponding bachelor's degree yan. So, kung assessor yan, kailangan na ano yan. Uh, not, um, uh, assessor, any four-year course yun, yun nakalagay sa ano. But probably more on the uh, business or commerce. no. Kung accountant, CPA talaga yan. Kung engineer, dapat license engineer yan. Ayan. Unlike dito sa elected, kahit sino pwede bumoto. Kasi limit, kasi yun lang yung in-offer sa ating constitution, no? Yan. Although sa president, vice president pala yun. Okay. Although regardless to say, pati dito sa elected, no, sa Omnibus Code of, uh, of the Philippines, ang nakaspecify lang naman dito is read and write. Wala pa nga silang civil service eligibility, di ba? Unlike with your appointed uh, bachelor's degree, tapos kasali ni dyan yung civil service eligibility. But regardless to say, okay, hindi ko na sinisingit. So ito yung ating, ano, no, going back, ito yung ating question. So I have included some social social demographic profiles no yan now let's go to the objective of your sop of your research of this made up data no so first is the perceived level of importance yan so punta tayo sa questionnaire so level of importance or perceived level of importance i have forget to encode this one yan perceived yan so maghanap kayo ng concepts no so, from your theories, then hanap kayo ng concepts that would now be operationalized. At, kailan, at yung operationalization ng ating concepts would be reflected from your tool, from your questionnaire. So, for instance, the researcher has, has selected yung concepts na binagay ng European Commissions. 
uh, commission and dictating the relevance of research in crafting policies. So yung respondents will now check kung important nga ba itong binigay ng European Commission. This will now serve as our measuring uh, tool para malaman natin yung importance ng evidence-based policies. Yan. So Likert scale yung ginamit natin. Yan. So when you craft your questionnaire, tandaan natin ha, na make sure na you provide the instructions, then provide the legends, no? especially when you are providing acronyms no yan pa medyo ma-maximize uh, natin yung space or ma-minimize minimize kasi yun ano natin whatever no yan so european commission i have only selected 10 no so 10 indicators madami indicators yan pero tuwing ko ginawang 10 pa medyo madali so yan no so relevance and research identify specific issues or problems research influence policy making process up to the 10 yan so, sasagutin niyo ng ating local government units. So, in terms of the perceived level of importance, 10 indicators yan. Yan, sa ating questionnaire. Then, SOP number 2, level of agreement on local government officials on underutilization of research. No? So, bakit hindi masyado ginagamit ang research sa ating policy making? So, again, you find some theories hanggang makadevive ka o makahanap ka ng isang magandang concept no? that will now suit in dun sa theoretical premise mo. So, this came from the uh, work of Crew and Young. No? So, providing the reasons why research is ignored in policy making. Yan, di ba? Underutilization. From the scale provided, kindly put a check mark on the corresponding choice. So, again, provide the legend. Yan, ito yung gagamitin natin. So, indicators. Ah, uh, madaming pre-provide na indicator si Crew and Yang, pero pre-provide ko lang 10 no. Yan pa madali no. So indicators kindly weigh your agreement on the following reasons why research is being underutilized and ignored in the policy process. Yan. So there are 10. Bakit ini-ignore ni Cynthia Villar, ba? Although ano no, uh, one objective probably bakit one significance, bakit na ba nga ba nating gustong malaman na medyo research has been neglected? And on the notion, bakit may mga politicians, di ba? Ang isi, uh, may I rephrase my statement? No? Ang isipin kasi ng iba sa atin, no? Importante naman talaga yung research, kahit ayaw na ayaw itong subject, no? Uh, importante naman talaga yung research pagdating mismo sa actual actual work natin, no? Kasi ginagamit natin yan. But when you try to check on a lot of individuals, especially dun sa balita kay Cynthia Villar, no? Sometimes research has been neglected in the government, no? Kaya gusto natin malaman kung bakit, no? And probably this would be the reason, no? So, kunyari, notion of anti-intellectualism of politicians. May isang politician na galit sa nurses, galit sa researchers, galit sa agriculture, ba? Mga agaw ng lupa, yan. So, yan yung ano na natin, no? So, bahala na kayo mag-provide ng significance at ang dami kong sinasabi. So, again, no? So, 10 indicators sa uh, level of agreement on the underutilization of research. Then, 10... Uh, indicators are determinants dito sa level of importance. Now, kunyari, you have collected your data. And among your data, kunyari, sabi nila natin 10 respondents yung kailangan natin. So, nakuha mo na yan, paano natin siya itatabulate ngayon sa ating statistical software. So, for instance, because of the lack of luxury, hindi natin magagamit yung SPSS, can we go now to what is the most available uh, tool, which is now your Microsoft Excel. So, yan. So, punta tayo dito. First things first, no? Okay, ginawa ko na siya, no? Um, basic and majority of you already know this one. Pero I hope there are some insights na you still do not know, no? And definitely, there are some, no? So, first, craft your headings, no? Okay, bahal na kayo kung, kung horizontal siya o vertical. Pero, mas maganda kung ano siya, eh. Kung horizontal. Yan. It's your taste, no? Yan. Kasi, pag ganun din yung words, eh. Yan. First, create your headlines. So, lahat ng nakalagay na variables and indicators niya is you have to encode it. Okay. So, saan nakuha itong respondents? So, okay. So, respondents for the sake of organization, no? So, the number of respondents. So, kung, kung respondent number one yung kunyari mag-encode ka na unang papel, you now number him as one. Up to kunyari 30, yan. So, for respondent number one, ito yung magiging responses niya. Yan. Age. Saan natin napulot yung Age. Napulot natin yung age dito. Tapos, I hope nakikita nyo dito. Gender. Yan. Nandito din yung gender. May I check kung... Okay. Yan. Lagay na lang natin yan. Gender. Uh, where are you? Tata. Yan. Gender, no? Yan. 
Tapos educational attainment. Uh, hindi ko na sinali yung address ng no? educational attainment. Just speak yung mga sa tingin mong gagamitin mo talaga. No? Uh, when you are now ana analyzing your data or interpreting your data. Educational attainment. Now, may, ano, no? so may, just, may sisingit lang. No? Uh, do you have to encode it? Yes, mahirap talaga yan. Or you could as well uh, provide a number for each variable. No? So lalo na, ang gulo ng ano natin yan. So for instance, no. So kung ordinal yung data mo, you start with the lowest value as one. So elementary graduate one. So you could just encode one for for elementary graduate. Ganyan lang yan. Pa medyo ma hindi na kayo mahirapan na mag encode. Or high school high school graduate, you could now equivalent this to two, three, four, five, six as PhD graduate, no. So kung nag encode kayo. Nakita mo PhD ka rate dito sa under sa educational attainment, you just encode 6. Or as well, ang kagandahan kasi sa Excel, pag once na in-encode mo na 'yan, ah uh, uh, once na in-encode mo na 'yan, uh, tapos ma-encode mo ulit siya next dito sa same column, automatically magaganito na siya no. So respondent number 11 for instance, college that ano, college graduate yung yung degree nung respondent 11. Pinindot mo yung C, you could just press tab. Yan, sa ating keyboard. Tab, yung nasa left, uh, pinaka-left ng ating keyboard, no? Yan. Tapos, yan. For, same as with CT, uh, LGU assigned, by the way. So, kunyari, college graduate siya, municipal, just press M, nalabas na siya, automatic na, just press tab, then elected. Kung elected siya, E, lalabas na siya agad, etc. X lang natin siya. Yan. Then, position. Now, ito. Okay, after the position, punta tayo dito, no? step by step tayo. No? Kung alam nyo na, okay, pero for, for those na hindi pa alam, kailangan natin is step by step yan. Oops, sorry, yan. So, yan. Position is the last uh, profile, demographic profile. No? Now, now, let's go to the main objective. No? So, part 2. So, ito ngayon yung isang variable na gusto natin siya may measure. Yan. Level of importance of evidence-based policies. Now, magtataka kayo kung saan nakuha itong 1 to 10. Now, itong 1 to 10 would now reflect dito sa indicators yung mga questions that would now provide yung level of importance so yan indicators 10 ah yan so 10 pwede niyo naman i-encode yung buong question pero medyo ang laki na nung ano ng ating ng ating excel so you could create questions so lagay niyo 1 2 3 or discard niyo yan you could also include question number 1 then question number 2 yan number 2 Tapos hanggang doon, hindi kayo malito. Pero yan, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yan. Tapos mag-color coding na din kayo. Ha? Yan. Um, uh, tip lang naman, pa hindi maguluhan, yung, hindi kayo malito, you could now color code, no? So, nandito, pwede siya. Or you could simply go to the uh, format cell. Yan, format cell, go to your fill. Tapos lagyan nyo ng uh, color, color, no? Kasi maganda yung color, color. But kahit dito na, pwede na, yan. So, yan, no? so, 1 to 10 would now reflect yung level of importance of evidence-based policies ng ating respondents. So, 1, question 1 up to 10. Now, ano yung big sabihin nitong 3, 3, 2, 1, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1. Example, tingin tayo dito. Yan kay respondent number 1. Now, itong 3, 3, uh, 3 kasi bulo lang, 3, 3, 2, 1 would now reflect dito sa ating options. Yan. Yung numerical rating, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hindi natin pwede gamitin yung abbreviation na H-I-M-I-P-I-N-I. -I -I. Aside from magdo-double click pa kayo sa keyboard nyo, walang numerical value yan. Tanda natin, statistics to, no? We're attempting to measure. So, numerical ratings yung i-encode natin. So, for respondent number 1, ang in-encode niya is number 3. So, number 3 falls under moderately important. Yan, 3, 2, 1, etc. Now, look up. Okay, now the next column is ito. Ano tong LI? Level of importance. We wanted to do the specific indicators dito sa ating level of importance. But, um, ano na pag-date ito? Uh, ang talagang gusto nating malaman is the, of, is the level of importance in total. So, hindi lang indicators. Ang gusto talaga nating malaman is yung level of importance. Now, one way to measure this one is through your overall mean, yung ating average. Yan, kaya i-encode natin yan. No? So, for each variables na gusto natin ma-measure, and when you construct your, your questionnaire, di ba, yung isang variable, madaming indicators yan, always remember 
to compute for the overall mean nung mga indicators na yan. Ito ngayon yung magde-describe ng level of importance. Yan. Kasi itong, kunyari, question number one. Punta tayo sa ano natin. Research identify specific issues and problems. Na kahit kunin mo yung overall ano niya, overall mean yan, hindi niya ipipicture in total yung level of importance. So you have to get the overall mean. Uh, I will explain things later, no? Okay. Now, next would now be in terms of the level of agreement, no? Of underutilization of research in policy process. Okay. Go back to SOP number two. Hinahanap natin siya. Then we now construct it in our questionnaire, no? So, yan. Part three, no? So, ten indicators siya. So, saan natin napulot itong ten? Doon sa ten indicators doon sa ating questionnaire. Same as din doon sa responses kasi 4-point Likert scale. And always remember to include the overall mean of the total variable that we are attempting to measure. Bakit overall mean? No? Uh, although madaming suggested, pero descriptive kasi, uh, usually ito yung ginagamit natin. Okay. Magtataka kayo sa baba, bakit ko in-encode ito? Uh, this is the arbitrary range later sa findings. Okay. Now, first step, no? Uh, wala sa SOP natin. Wala, na, wala sa SOP natin. Kunyari, but uh, you wanted to look for the profile of the respondents, no? So, ilan yung gender, ilan yung age, ilan yung gender, ilan yung educational attainment. Madali lang yan. Uh, all you need to do is to do your frequency. Yan. So, bilangin nyo lang, no? Tapos yung percentage. Okay na yan. Tapos magpa-function na lang tayo dito ng count off. Yan. Hindi na natin pumublimahin yun kasi basic yun. Now, punta tayo dito sa level of importance. Now, how to analyze this one? How to generate? Na-organize na kasi natin yan. How to generate yung findings for your level of importance on evidence-based policies? Now, first things first, no? So, make sure na may row kung saan naka-assign naka yung ating data. Yan. Ano yan? Daming alam mo. Okay. Now, from your data, dahil 4-point Likert scale yung ginamit natin, you do hindi suited ang frequency and probably ang madalas na ginagamit natin dito would now be your mean, your weighted mean. Now, how to compute for your weighted mean dito sa ating Excel? Madali lang yan. All you need to do is to encode average. Average would now dictate the arithmetic mean. Yung weighted mean kasi, um, how to explain this one? Um, naka-reflect na siya dito sa 3, 3, 4, no? So, hindi na tayo magma-manual computation. Yan. So, click on average. Kunyari, indicator number 1 muna yung gagawin natin. Yan. Indicator 1 muna. Yan. So, click dito. Kung saan magsisimula yung actual response. Yan, dito. Then, just drag it down hanggang dun sa last respondent. May question ako later. Yan. So, lalabas is 2.9. Itong 2.9 would now be the overall mean for indicator number 1. So, punta tayo sa questionnaire muna. Okay. Dito tayo. Yan. Perceived level of importance. I have I forgot to include yung perceived data. Yan. Research identify specific issues or problem. Now, for the total 10 respondents, ito yung mean nila. 2.9. Yan. Mamaya na natin ano yun, no? Now, para hindi na kayo mahirapan mag-encode... Yan, especially to sa level of importance, just drag it down. Uh, itong cell natin, no? uh, rectangle siya, di ba? So, lower right, pindutin mo yan. Kung nag-cross na siya, hindi na natin. Yan, just drag it down dito. Ang ibig sabihin yan, kunyari, let's go to your indicator number 9. Yan, sinundan yan na yung function. Yan, for indicator number 9, yan din yung lalabas na mean. Okay. Now, let's go to your presentation of data. Sample questionnaire, then presentation of data. Yan. Now, kunyari, nahanap na natin ito. Now, paano natin siya i-organize sa ating literature, sa ating research, sa ating chapter 3? Okay. Ganito lang yan. Kanina, pinakita ko yung SOP questionnaire. Ngayon, pupunta tayo dito sa ating, sa ating findings. Now, paano natin siya ma-generate? There are a few ways, pero I think this is the most organized. No? Okay. So, yung level of importance dun sa questionnaire natin, ipipresent nyo natin yung findings. So, create a table. Yan. So, table number one, provide the, the title, perceived level. My apologies. Yan. Perceived level. Control S na lang natin. Yan. So, lagay mo yung indicators for the first column. So, nandyan yung 10. 
at ilalagay mo ngayon yung findings. Usually, weighted mean. You could put or, uh, weighted mean, no? Yan. Weighted mean. So, weighted mean ng indicator 1, 2.9. Weighted mean ng indicator 2 is 2.9. Hanggang sa 10. Yan. Hanggang sa 10. Tapos, with each weighted mean, in your table as well, provide the legend. Dito na natin ulit gagamitin yung arbitrary range. So, basta pag 4-point Likert scale, ito na yung gagamitin mo. Diba, uh, in-introduce ko yung computation ng ating range. Yan. From highly important, not at all important. Or you could provide another descriptive equivalent as well. No? Basta malapit siya sa importance. No? Yan. So, yung weighted mean na na-generate natin sa Excel, all you need to do is to find saan siya nagko-cover. So, 2.9 under what range siya? Under siya sa moderately important. So, Moderately important kasi 2.9 na sa gitna. Ilalagay natin dito is MI. Always remember to put the acronym, yung abbreviation niya, no? para hindi na mahaba. 2.9 MI. Indicator number 3, 3.1. Saan nakalagay yung 3.1? Under siya sa moderately. Lager. And hanggang dito, okay. Kunyari ito, no? Yan. Number 5, 3.5. Yung lumabas dito. Yan, lumabas dito. 3.5 na. Sana hindi ko na pinindot. Ah... Uh, Yan. Yung 3.5, uh, umalis ka nga. Yan. 3.5 HI. Bakit yung HI? Yan. Lumabas siya dito. Kaya yung include ko din dito, no? Yan. HI 3.5. Malapit na siya sa 4. Yan. Now, up to 10. Now, paano itong overall mean? Ganito yung overall mean natin. There are two ways. Yung overall mean natin is now, we will now, uh, the first way is to is to extract the overall mean per respondents. Yan. So all you need to do is to get the average ng sagot nung per respondent. So respondent number one, click natin to. Oops, I forgot to include the parentheses. Yan. Click natin yan. At ang lalabas is 2.2. Hindi natin siya ma-analyze per... Pwede natin siya analyze per respondent. Pero I think that is not relevant, no? Yan. Relevant siya pag magdi-differential na tayo. Uh, I will explain things later. Yan. But regardless to say, yan, from, ito yung overall mean ng level of importance. Kasi these are indicators ah, that would now reflect yung level of importance. Tapos yung total overall, ref, uh, overall perceived level of importance ng respondent number one, ito yung magiging ano niya. So for respondent number one, ito yung magde-describe ng overall Tapos per specific, ito yung mga ano niya. So 2.2, yung kanyang overall perceived level of importance. Pero hindi pa natin siya hanapin. No? So gusto natin lahat. No? At ano yung encode natin dito. Yan, 3.2. So ang gagawin ngayon natin is to drag it down. So kinuha natin lahat from respondent number 1 up to respondent number 10. Kasi 10 lang respondents natin. So yan na yung lalabas. And lastly, ang kukunin natin would now be the average of everybody that would now describe the whole level of importance of the group. So, lagay natin average. Then, click natin from the first respondent up to the last respondent. In this case, there's 10 respondents. So, 3.2. So, check natin kung tama. Yan, 3.2. Yan. Then, 3.2, oh, by the way, that is the first step, which is uh, widely suggested kasi... Uh, pa-organize yung ating data. Now, the easiest step, pero medyo hindi siya organize, is simply get the average of the generated average dito. Yan, 3.2 din yan. Pa Paano siya hindi, uh, ano, um, hindi organize? Kasi horizontal yung ano natin eh. Although, pwede naman yan. Regardless to say, bahala kayo kung anong gusto nyo. Yan, 3.2. So, go back tayo dito sa table. So, 3.2. So, pwede alone dito, i-compute nyo na yung computation dito, tapos i-kuha nyo yung mean ng overall na ito. Yan, pang dito din. Pag naging, naging horizontal lang siya dito, dito, uh, dito naging vertical. Yan, 3.2. Then, 3.2 would now fall under moderately important. So, in terms of the whole perceived level of importance of your local government officials on evidence-based policies, 3.2. So, moderately important yung sinasabi. Yan. Uh, when you analyze, guys, um, 
basically you could do ranking ana- analysis. So there are different types of ways on analyzing numbers, no. So pwede mo siya i-rank. So uh, when asked kung hinahanap ng yung advisor, no. Pero moderately madalas ito lang naman yung hinahanap, no. So ano yung pinakamataas dito? 3. Yan. So you may rank it as uh, kasi madaming 2.9 eh. Uh, hanapin niyo muna yung lowest, no. So ano yung pinaka lowest dito? would now be 1, di ba? So, lagay mo 1, 1, tapos 1, tapos second na lowest. Basta yan, yung mag-compute na lang kayo, no? Yan. Now, when you do ranking analysis, yung pinamataas, bakit? Bakit siya yung pinaprioritize? Hanapin nyo. Uh, rational choice theory, di ba? Alam nyo yung rational choice theory, di ba? We weigh in things according to what is uh, needed the most, then what is needed the least, di ba? Di ba? We base our choices according to our interest, di ba? So, self-interest according to our desires, according to our goals, no? So, kunyari, ito yung pinakamataas, research monitors and evaluates impact of policies, uh, you now provide literatures that would now indicate bakit ito yung pinaprioritize or binibigyan ng importansya ng ating local government units. Yan. So, rank analysis, pwede yan. Kaya in-include natin yan. Second, would now be comparative analysis, which is uh, widely used sa ranking. So, you compare, no, bakit ito yung highly important and the rest is moderately important. So, Okay, so when we analyze using Likert scale, no? So, highly important is full-blown na, kunyari, uh, behavioralism yung school natin, no? Uh, rational choice theory, no? So, it, the rational choice theory is based on self-interest, based on cost and benefit, no? So, dito highly beneficial, di ba? Highly important. Bakit nga ba siya highly beneficial? Pag kunyari dito, moderately important, there are benefits pero na recognize nila yung yung risk, yung mga consequences, yung mga sanctions, no? So, beneficial pero may certain negative aspects sa kanila. Partially important, more likely is may benefit, yes, pero mas umiibabaw yung sanctions, yung risk, yung mga consequences, negative consequences. Not at all important, purely walang benefit. Tapos, uh, ang lahat ay panig sanctions, punishment, no? Yan. So, you have to analyze that one. So, rank when comparative analysis, tapos arbitrary range, no? So, kung may pinovide na descriptive equivalent, yan, may basis din dito. Yan. So, ganun yung pag-construct natin, no? From your questionnaire towards your Excel pagdating dito sa ating findings. So, this is now the findings. Yan. Ganun din for your level of agreement, no? Although, may, may pinovide ba yung uh, table for your level of agreement? Ganun din, no? So again, for your level uh, level of agreement, just put average. Or you could now drag it dito, no? Kasi same function lang naman siya. Eh. Yan. 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 Or kung hindi mo drinag, kasi medyo uh, you're doubting yourself, i-encode mo na lang, tapos pindutin mo for indicator number 1 hanggang dun sa last respondent. So 3. 3.1 hanggang dito. Division. Ibig sabihin, wala pa tayo na-encode dito, ah. Yan. Punta muna tayo dito for the specific indicators. Naihina ako pero tapusin na lang natin to. Yan. Yan. So, level of agreement ha. So, 3, 3.1, 3, hanggang sa last na is 2.4. Yan. Tapos, you also now check yung arbitrary range for each indicators, no? So, 3 is moderately aware. Oh, by the way, 3, tama. So, under siya dito. Yan. Or dito pala, dito na natin siya i-base yan. I will be sending yung lahat ng files, no? Dun, I will be attaching it, no? Yan. So, ilalagay natin dyan. Yan. Descriptive equivalent. Now, next. Okay. For each indicators na hanap na natin, ang gusto natin makuha yung overall mean ng lahat ng groups, yung set na gusto natin malaman. So, same din dito. Get the average. So, for the variable level of agreement, 3.7, then... Tana! 2.98. Yan. Ay, hiyot ng online visit. Okay. 2.98. Yan. 2.98. That would now sum up the level of agreement in total. Lahat na nung pati ng indicators and the groups. Yan. 2.98. And 2.98 falls under MA. Moderately agree. Yan. Okay. So, Question. Uh, before going to the inferential statistics, medyo mahaba to, no? Okay. Now, kunyari, um, na-encode mo na is 10 respondents. Tapos, um, your advisor, panelist na dagdagan nyo pa. 
or during the process nag-encode ka na nailagay mo na to tapos nalaman mo na kulang pala simply just click ko niya dito yan uh, before the last ilagay mo dito insert yan when you need 30 no tapos na encode mo na 10 at na encode mo na tong generated findings so all you need to do is to click dito tapos insert insert no medyo matrabaho yan no so you could click this one then insert yan magiging apat tapos Yan, kung ilan yung sinelect mag magta times 2 no. Now, yung magiging trabaho niyo lang ulit is to encode yung ating ano. Yan. So, uh, basically relevant nga ba yung paglagay ng respondents dito? Ah, ah, hindi naman, pero for organizational sake, lagay niyo na to. Yan. Tama bilang niyo din kasi iba yung iba yung numbering dito sa mismong row cell uh, compared dito sa ating respondents. So, para madalian din kayo sa pag-numbering, so just drag it down. Yan, yan yung kagandahan sa Excel. Tapos, encode, encode na, encode na din kayo. Yan, di ba? So, yan, male, female, just yung sinabi ko kanina, no? Yan. Yung isa pang trabaho na gagawin nyo is to adjust yung ating function. So, you could just simili, uh, you could just simply start dito sa ating, uh, sa ating indicator number 1, no? So, average, you just X this one. Uh, alisin na lang natin lahat ng nasa loob ng parenthesis. Then, just expand it hanggang dun sa last. Ano natin. Yan. Tapos, yan. Madali na siya. All you need to do is to drag it down dito. Yan. Ganun din sa ano, no? Uh, may I go back na lang, no? Yan. Ayan. Pwede na yan. Uh, isa pa. Oop. Yan. Control Z, Y lang yan, no? Okay. So, that is for your descriptive. And, paano natin siya ma-generate sa sa ating table. Now question, paano na ako mag-inferential statistics tayo? Yan. So for instance, no, going back with your SOP number 2. After all of these descriptive statistics, you wanted to know if there's a difference on certain variables. In this case, you wanted to know if there's a difference when it comes significant difference when it comes to elective and appointed, appointed government positions. So ang gagawin natin dito is ito yung gagamitin natin. At ano yung variable, ano yung dependent variable natin? Perceived level of importance. So, level of importance would be this one. Okay. Now, the uh, medyo chaotic yung napansin ko in some researches, no? Lalo na sa masters, no? In the individual niya pa to, no? But, unti, may maunting ganun, no? Pero yung iba, they just get the overall mean as their independent variable. Kasi the... the uh, level of import the overall mean would now will now completely picture yung level of importance eh. actually ito naman talagang ginagamit no pero iba kasi in the individual pa nila eh tapos later lang din kukunin din nila yung level of importance yung overall mean ng level of importance kaya ang laki ng kanilang research paper ah uh, you could do it individually yung inferential pero wag na di ba tapos madami din siya ito na tsaka, yung the term na wag na is in the sense na ito pa lang, it could now picture, it could now really picture yung, yung differences. No? Kaya ito yung gagamitin natin. Okay. So, th there are two variables. So, your your dependent variable would now be this one, scale. Okay. At we will now compare yung ating independent variable would now be elected or appointed. Yan. So, ito ay... Uh, two groups. So, two groups kasi elected and appointed. So, gagamitin natin ng tites. Yan. Now, paano to? Uh, if you remember yung mga previous discussion natin, yung pag-organize niya is something like this, di ba? Elected, then appointed, di ba? Tapos, for each cell, reflects yung yung response ng ating, ng ating respondent. So, kunyari, respondent number one is 2.2. Tapos, respondent number 2 is appointed. Di ba? Kasi elected yung num respondent number 1. Eh. Then, appointed for respondent number 2, he is appointed. She is appointed, by the way. Tapos, 3.5. Tapos, for number 3, is appointed. Tapos, 3.5. Medyo ano siya. Medyo matrabaho siya if you're going to follow this one. Ah, uh, Bakit nga ba natin pinafollow this one? Kasi yung later dun sa function, di ba? Yung variable, yung input. So, you have to drag it down. Uh, that is ano no that is the original funk uh, original way on how to not the original yun yung primary way on how to analyze your t-test pero may mas madali no there are two ways 
I will discuss the first, the ba uh, not the basic, uh, the basic, then the easiest later. No? Okay. We wanted to compare elected and appointed. So, dito siya, no? Okay. Uh, all you need to do for the first way is to select yung mga responses, no? So, wag nyo to pipindutin, ha? New heading. Pindutin nyo to. Yan. Then, go to your home tab. Nasa home tab na tayo. Then, sort and filter. Yan. Sort muna tayo, ha? Mamaya yung filter method. Now, pagdating dito sa sort, uh, the best way to organize yung responses is through alphabetical order. Kasi elected, lahat ng E, magkakasama yan. Lahat ng appointed A, magkakasama yan. So, sort to A to Z. Yan. Or Z to A. Regardless to say, mas maganda A to Z na lang. Pindutin natin dyan. Okay. Now, question. Pag sinort ko to, tendency, baka madidisalign yung mga responses. Ano ibig kong sabihin dito? Now, kunyari, for respondent number one, Mm, mm, respondent number one, no. Uh, ang response ng respondent number one, 41 male. Uh, please take note, ah, pamagets natin. Or dito na lang, yan. Or respondent number one na lang. 41, 41 siya, male siya, college graduate, 16, municipal, elected siya, then consular. Hindi pa pwedeng ma, pag in alphabet, pag in organize natin siya alphabetically, uh, magugulo-gulo siya, hindi. Kasi papasok siya dito. So, please take note muna. So, kunyari respondent number 1 is 16 municipal then consular. Then, respondent number 2 is 14 city appointed registrar. So, sulat nyo. I hope you could pause then sulat nyo. Kung magugulo siya, hindi siya magugulo. Kasi nakalagay dito sa window na lumabas, sort warning, Microsoft Excel found data next to your selection. So, sinabi niya is, na-recognize ng Excel na align yung mga data. Since you have not selected this data, you have not selected all of the data, what do you want? Expand the selection. Ang ibig sabihin na expand the selection is yung sorting remains the same. Na naka-align pa rin yung mga variables dito. Ano ibig ko sabihin? Yung sinabi kong i-take note nyo. So, isosort natin siya. So, hanapin natin kunyari yung municipal, yung respondent number one. Yan. Yung respondent number one, lahat ng responses niya ay na-sort according dun sa ano. Uh, yung responses niya ay sumama. So, ito lang yung naging or, uh, inorganized lang siya through variable, pero yung responses remains the same. So, kung anong sagot ng respondent number one kanina, remains, sumasama siya. So, inorganized lang natin siya according to groups. So, medyo magulo yung explanation ko, pero I hope na gets nyo, no? So, yung respondent number two, di ba? Kanina, 14 city appointed registrar. So, sumama din siya. So, ito lang inorganized natin pa. Now, the, the reason why is para pagdating sa tites, yung mga input ay magkakasama ngayon siya. Okay. Now, let's go to your data analysis. So, I hope na activate nyo na siya, banda dito. So, go to your options, go to your add-ins. Uh, add-ins, click go. Naka-check yan. Okay. Now, next is we go to your data analysis. Data analysis. Two groups siya. Gamitin natin ngayon is tites. You could use equal variance actually, by the way, kung nag-play kayo ng data, kasi yung DF niya is actually 18. But researchers would now suggest na unequal variance. Yeah. And yun yung sinasuggest ko. No? So one would question, bakit iba yung ano, blah, 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 unequal variance, pa medyo hindi tayo risky. Yun yung argument nila. Wag na natin problemahin. Diba? Click OK. Yan. Now variable 1, then variable 2. Okay. Now please take note, ha? and di natin ma-include yung labels, kasi yung labels nasa ano siya dito eh. Nandito siya banda. So, lalagay natin siya ngayon. Now, I forgot to include, no? Before before going sa tites, uh, ito yung gusto nating i-compare at ito. Ito yung i-compare natin at yung i-compare natin would now be this one. Hindi natin i-compare to, no? Now, para mas madali, you go to yung variable na gusto natin i-compare. This one, di ba? Okay. Now, nandito yung overall mean nito. Kunyari, ito din yung gusto natin yung compare. Nawawala siya, no? So, napupunta doon yung variable natin. So, in terms of alignment, medyo nakakalito. So, tip, no? Uh, go to your view. Yan. So, ito yung variable. Go to your right side, no? Yan, dito. Kasi, pag ganun tayo. Pag ganun tayo. Go to your right side. Ito yung headings natin. So, sa baba ng headings, on the right side of the actual headings uh, dito, Pindutin nyo lang to. Bakit ito? Uh, later, makagagets nyo. No? Go to your freeze pane dito sa view tab. Ayan. Then, freeze pane. There are freeze top row. Ang if you freeze nyo would now be yung encoded na pinaka top. So, basically, ito lang. 
Tapos pag fees first column, ang if fees niya lang ito. Yan. In this case, ito yung magiging basis natin eh. Tapos syempre yung heading natin ito yung basis. So go to dito kung yung saan na din natin gustong makita itong position for instance, then freeze the pane. May lalabas ang ganyan. Ang ibig sabihin niyan is kahit you move it to the right, the header remains. So kahit binaba mo yan, the header still remains. Yan. So yan no. So going back, ang gusto nating i-compare would now be appointed and elected tapos yung level of perceived level of importance siya. So sinabi ko kanina ito lang yung gusto natin i-compare, di ba? Yan. So mas madali na siya. Yan. So ito yung gusto nating compare. Yan. Medyo I'm already wasting time. Medyo mabilis or medyo mabagal. Hindi ko alam pero I hope na gets you know. Yan. So ito yung gusto nating compare. Now let's go back dun sa statistical treatment natin. Go to your data analysis. T-test assuming unequal variance. Yan. So variable 1 just take note ha, kasi ang hirap ng labeling dito. Uh, hindi natin malilabel. So for variable number 1, appointed yung gusto nating compare, select yung level of importance ng lahat nung appointed. So i-align nyo lang. Yan. Naka-align siya. No? Yan. Click enter. Now for variable number 2, elected siya. So ang gagawin natin dito is, i-select natin yung lahat ng responses na elected. Yan. Now imagine, no, kaya sinort natin siya. Now, kung hindi natin sinort, 1, 2, 3, iba-iba yung ano niya, hindi siya, hindi natin makukuha yung range. Hmm, daming alam nito. Okay. <laughs> hindi natin maano yung range. So, yan. So, label, hindi natin makukuha yung label kasi yung labeling nandito. Yan. Alpha, 0 0.05, basic na yan. Now, output range, click this one. Pindutin nyo muna ito, ah. Yan, ito. Kasi kung pipindutin nyo, medyo nagugulo-gulo yung data natin. Click this one. Hanap tayo ng malawak na space, sabihin na natin dito na lang. Yan. Tapos, click OK. Yan. T-test to sample assuming unequal variance. Uh, for the sake of data presentation, hindi ko siya in-include dito. Kasi this alone, could now, uh, you could now use this as your as your table presentation sa, top, sa chapter 3. Variable 1 is appointed. Tama? Yan, up na lang. Okay. Then next is elective. Yan. Sinort card ko na, elected, yan. So, when you try to check, kinumpare nyo na yung mean nitong lahat. Yung for the appointed. Kinumpare din ng mean ng mga elected. Yan. So, yung mean nito at yun nyo. So, variance, kinumpare na din. So, descriptive statistics alone could now provide us a snapshot between a difference, a comparison, and difference na din kasi hindi statistical difference ng, ng appointed, then elective. Yan. Observation. So, observation, there are 6 appointed. Bilangin natin manually. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then there are 4 elected. Yan. Hypothesis mean difference. Wala yan. Significant difference. Unequal variance style. So, no, ano na yan, no big deal. Then, just simply go to your P two-tailed. Bakit two-tailed? We're looking for, going back with your SOP, significant difference. If your question will now rely dun sa movement, increases or decreases, which is not applicable on this one, gagamitin natin is one-tailed. But two-tailed tayo, no? Okay. Now, I hope medyo kabisado na natin to. Ha? 0 0.05 ang basis natin. Yan. 0 0.05 ang basis natin. Uh, Nag-move siya nandito. 0 0.05 ang basis natin. Anong mas malaki? Yung P or yung, na yung level of significance or yung P na na-generate natin sa two-tailed. So, mas malaki yung ating P. Pag mas malaki ito, if your P is lesser than your 0 0.05, significant siya. Tama, di ba? Lesser than. Yan. So, mas malaki yung ating level of significance. So, therefore, it is now significant. So, yan ang lagi natin tanda na significant. So, significant. So, in your analysis, na na-mention ko na dati, there's a huge, there's a huge difference. There's a significant difference on appointed and elected officials when it comes to level of importance. So, dito napapasok yung kay Haywood, di ba? Yung, yung functions of, of the bureaucracy or going deeper kay, kay Max Weber, di ba? Yung, or some literatures na din, di ba? Uh, on... On public administration, lalo na sa public administration ito, the difference between public administrators and politicians, no? Why? Kasi, for instance, specialization, di ba? So, research, di ba? 
if you're in your profession, research has been specialized, di ba? Ang research ng engineers iba sa research ng politicians. But regardless to say, if you are educated, uh, you will now have a higher notion of research being important. No? Mas handa na yung pinag-isasabihin. No? Yun, no? Kasi bureaucracy, di ba? Ang features ng bureaucracy is specialized. Masyado siyang specialized. Kung ano yung field mo, dun ka, di ba? Regardless to say, unlike with elected, di ba? Ang problema kasi sa elected is... Uh, wala namang major requirements. Basta yun, bahala na kayo mag-analyze doon na na-provide ko na siya dati. Yan. Ano pa ba? So, t-test, no? So, for instance, although hindi ko na-discuss, hindi ko na-present yung ano, so you want to know kung niyabi, uh, LGU assign, di ba? Kung city, provincial city, kung may kinalaman siya sa importance. So, kung niyabi, you think that kung nasa city siya, uh, mas mataas yung importance. So, gamitin mo lang yung data analysis. So, again, you go to sort. So, select nyo to. Kunyari, pag city, go to your home. Tapos, sort it by AZ. So, expand the selection. Sasama pa rin yung, yung responses. So, sort. At, yan. So, city, municipal, then province. And when you observe, no, hindi gumalaw yung ating yung ating final data dito. 2.9. Yan. Now, kunyari, biglang nalito kayo. No? So, gusto nyo ibalik sa dati. So, just select yung respondents. Kaya, ito, ito, guys. Ha. So, always remember to put the number of your respondents. Yan. If in case na nalilito na kayo na gugulo. So, sort the smallest, number 1. Up to 10. So, sort. Yan. Balik tayo sa original. Yan, di ba? Yung kanina, 16. Yan. Ganun lang siya. That's the beauty of Excel. Pero I'm not using Excel anymore. Yan. Uh, ano pa ba? Tapos, yung kanina yung ginawa ko is ANOVA lang siya, no? Tapos pag ANOVA, punta lang tayo. Although, naka, hindi na siya naka-organize, no? So, single factor tayo. Yan. So, for ANOVA, uh, you just simply put yung ano, no? Yung per row. Yan. Yeah, what else? Wala na. Hmm, ano pa ba? Hmm, ah, pala yung filter method. <laughs> pala ito yung nakalimutan ko. Okay. Now, coming back, no? Yung sorting method na pinaggagawa ko kanina, yung ito, ito. May mas madaling way. Pero I think, oh, minsan ito na yung gamitin nyo, no? Pero the, uh, regardless to say kung anong saan kayo mas comfortable, okay na siya, no? Um, I think you will be comfortable dito sa filter method. Now, dito sa filter method, madali lang yan. Okay. Uh, nandito yung filter. So, select this one. Okay. This would now reflect yung headings natin. Kaya when you construct yung ano, taas nyo itong level of importance. Huwag nyo, uh, i-merge nyo sa dito. Now, yung mga variables na, di ba kasi, this would now encompasses per indicator. Yan. Um, when you construct your data, make sure yung demographic profile, tapos yung mga indicators ay naka-align. So, wag nyo ilalagay yung level of importance. This will now signify yung mga specific indicators. Wag mo sa ile-level dito, tapos yung mga 1, 2, 3, 4, yung mga questions, ibababa mo. Wag, wag, wag. Kasi magigulo, magiging magulo yung ano natin. Especially dito sa, dito sa overall mean. Now, may I just X this one? Yan. Now, paano itong filter method na pinagsasabi ko? Now, select these headings. Yan. Naka-headings yan. Just go to your filter. Yan. Tara, tapos na yan. Ano ibig sabihin niya? Okay. Uh, ginagamit din to sa government, no? especially when I was employed sa, sa DA. The, uh, lahat ng database nila is on the filter method. Because they could not afford, or hindi naman they could not afford the SPSS. There are some instances kasi that data is not treated with statistical uh, with statistics. Eh. We just wanted to know yung, yung information about certain variables or certain headings. So, he, so okay na yung Excel. Now, coming back, no? Para saan tong filter, no? Okay. So, for instance, let's go to a categorical variable, gender. Yan. Yan. So, ang filter, big sabihin niya, if you filter niya, doon sa mga options, you know. So, ganito. You wanted to know yung mga responses ng males lang. So, all you need to do is to select this one and click males. Yan. So, lumabas yung mga males. So, yun, fini-filter niya. So, kunyari, would now be females. Yan, lalabas. Tapos, anong kinalaman niya dito sa ano? Kaya sinasabi ko kanina, di ba? This is the easiest. Well, this is the basic. Most basic and easiest, di ba? Yan, yung superlative ko. Okay. <laughs> Yan. Yan. So, you wanted to know the males and females. Then, you could as well now sort it by groups. Organ uh, organizedly sort it, no? By your filter method. So, kunyari, you wanted to know the difference between males and females. 
you know, select sort to A to Z. Yan. Tapos dito. Tapos dito is more likely, <laughs> pabihan nyo na yun, indicators kasi 341. But, there are some instances kasi, yung questionnaire nyo, uh, may demographic profile, tapos magla-Likert scale kayo dito, tapos magre-frequency kayo. Kaya, yun yung sinabi ko kanina, kailangan make sure na naka-align yung ating headings. Yan. Now, ganito, no? Uh, I-observe nyo, no? Yung average, kung nangyari yan, no? naka-built-in na yan. So, you wanted to know, for instance, sabihin na natin dito, appointed and elected. Kasi ito yung hinanap na SOP number 2. Elected. 2.9. Nawala yung ano, ah. Kasi, yung function niya is naka-align pa rin dito. Tinago niya lang yung mga nasa rows. Yan. So, 2.9 pa rin. Now, if you want to know, but please do not uh, make this as a foundation already of your of your Excel. Um, ang gagawin nyo is, kunyari, you wanted to know the mean of the elected. Yan. You have to re-encode again average, then get the average of the elected. So, yan yung lumalabas. So, ah, <laughs> so yan, observe nyo no Yan, nag-iba na siya Kahit nakikita nyo na Pang similar naman It lang kung passes the similar thing The similar numbers Yung sa average kasi Kahit nakatago, automatic na yan So you have to re-encode it again Yan, so 3, 3.8 Tapos delete nyo ulit uh, Medyo hindi na kayo malito Li, Ang style kasi sa, sa Excel is Is yung built-in Tapos kung may gusto kang malaman Then delete, then delete it no Yan Then, appointed. Tapos, yung ginawa natin kanina, sort A to Z. Yan. So, I think that's all, no? By the way, uh, when you organize yung data natin sa chapter 3, uh, you could now, uh, pagdating dito, pagdating dito, kunyari sa t-test, nag-inferential statistics na kayo. So, sinasagot nyo na ito. Alisin nyo na, you, you include this one. So, just encode yung mga variables na compare natin. Yung independent variables then delete yung one tail part no delete natin yung one tail part yan uh, in your word no so pagkatapos ng t stat diretso tayo sa p tapos you may now uh, uh, you could not bold kasi medyo pangit tignan so delete nyo yan then put an asterisk uh, ito yung madalas na pinapresent kasi sa SPSS significant at significant at 0.05. So, this will now indicate that ang basis nyo is 0.05 for the readers, no? Or, for, or lagay nyo, P. Malaking P-value is significant at yan. yan. So, pag P-value, ito na lang titignan, you have to delete the two-tailed. Yan. You forget to point a space. So, I think that's it, guys, no? Uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Tapos, I hope when you already um uh, Conduct your research for thesis 1. I hope this would be helpful, no? Uh, kasi wala pa yung luxury ng SPSS kasi I cannot share it to you. And that's the dilemma. But there are some instances na din na, din na you'll be using Excel, no? Kasi may... Although pagdating sa statistics, walang limitation ng SPSS, no? So regardless to say, I hope na gets nyo na to, no? And wag laging umasa sa SPSS na yun yung mistake ko lagi. <laughs> Maganda kasi. So I think guys, I hope this would be thankful. So good luck, ha? And God bless. Paano to? Ako na ibaba ko. <laughs>